Imagine a country where jobs are plentiful and families can get ahead. A country where veterans are treated with dignity and respect. A country so powerful, terrorism is in retreat. Our families safe. A country run by a leader whose career was built on success. A leader who isn't beholden to special interests, but to the people themselves. Make America great again. Donald Trump for president. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. Love Talk Radio. Staley here, and I'm always fascinated to be able to talk to Jamaican, making a positive difference. This evening, it's my dear pleasure to introduce Denise Maxwell, a pioneering internet entrepreneur who's driving Caribbean TV world and has a monthly evening for the Jamaican community in Chicago. She is a fascinating guest she'll be interviewing tonight. Denise, take it away. Oh, thank you, Chris. This evening we have a treat to celebrate the Jamaica of the yesteryear. Margaret Marshall was born in Kingston, Jamaica. She served in the British Army in the Royal Nursing Corps, earned her BS from NYU, and has had a successful career in marketing as a marketing trainer and consultant. In 1986, Marshall was recognized in the who's who of American women. She raised two sons, one daughter, and is now a grandmother of three who are the pride and joy of her life. She describes herself as a passionate senior, still vibrant and passionate about her work. One of her current goals is to help seniors live their passion before they leave this planet. Now that Margaret has retired, she's started a backyard lavish online in order to leave a living legacy about growing up in Jamaica before independence. Welcome, Margaret. Hello there. Oh, we're Thank so you. happy to have you today. Tell us a little about about you and your Jamaican roots. Oh, wow. Well, you know, I've been here for such a long time, and in spite of that, I will talk to someone, and they say, where are you from? And I always say, why do you ask? Because, you know, I don't think I sound different. But that's just to tell you how rooted I am in being a Jamaican. Mm. Who brought you to, what brought you to the U.S.? Well, I came here to go to college. Oh, I see. So that's what brought me here. Oh, I see. When you graduated from high school and you came up. Right. Well, actually, I was in the Army before I came here, and I had a chance to go to England, to go to London, to complete my education, or to come to America. And I chose to come to America. Most of my friends and colleagues went to England, but I came here. Well, it's the, what they say, the road less traveled has made all the difference. You've heard of that poem? Oh, of course I have. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you've That's been one recognized. of the things that I'm always on the road less traveled. <laughs> I have the bruises to prove it. Yeah, ah. yeah, a trailblazer. You've been recognized as who's who in America. What does that mean to you? Well, you know, actually, to be very frank with you, not much. Because, <laughs> you know, it, it's just... To me, what means more to me is what I have done over my life to enlarge somebody else's life or somebody else's career or what I've done for my community or my friends or my family. That's really Uh what's more important. I just mentioned that there, but between you and I, some of my friends don't even know. You know what I mean? It was more career-driven at the time because I Mm -hmm. was really at the top of my game. Mm -hmm. Um, At one time in my career, I was a stockbroker and sold insurance. Mm. And I was really on top of my game, you know, for a few years there. 
And that was when that came forth. I see. But I have had such a colorful life that, you know, that's just one little thing. It's interesting you should say that you've had a varied of careers. Folks um, today need the plan for 10 to 12 career changes. What advice would you have in managing career changes? Well, to me, the first thing is to know when you are on top of your game and there's no other, no more space to go any further, either because it doesn't exist in where you are or you are not ready to go to the next step. Because I believe through your whole life, you should always be growing. And I remember when I did Memory Gems on my um, show, I re- this one always sticks with me. Good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better best. Ah. So for me, when I knew I was at my best, I thought I got bored. Yeah. Well, and I want to uh, another best thing, you know, so I would start at the good and then yeah. go up to the best. It's kind of like the saying, when you're green, you grow, and when you're ripe, you spoil. So you got to stay green to keep That's growing. That's right. You're so right, and I never heard that one before. <laughs> you see yourself as a passionate senior. There is a stereotype that seniors live in a doctor's office. Speak to us about enjoying your golden years. Oh, honey, and I could be living in the doctor's office if I chose to. I could be complaining about all the things that are going south, and that's wrong with me. But this show is not about that, because I'm saying that to say, although I sound very bright, uh, vibrant, and, you know, positive and joyous, I do have quite a few medical challenges, quite a few. Mm. But I think that what has kept me, you know, in the with my passion always important to me, is your state of mind. A lot of people spend more time at taking care of their bodies and don't do anything for their mind. And and, and the most important thing is that to, to keep the mind going, because if you, the mind's going, um, the body will follow. You know right. that's right, honey. And as I say, you know, a lot of people do not believe or do not spend enough time and money in personal development. And you should always involve in personal development. Always, 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 always. And I think that would be my advice for the people in careers and their changes and, and, and go for the, 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 the careers that you really feel in your heart. Not about, it's not about the money. But what 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 stimulates you? What you know keeps you up at night because you're so excited about it? Right. What drives you? Yeah. Not, not not keeps you up at night because you feel overworked, but what keeps you up at night for the joy of doing it? Right. You are focused on keeping alive the memories of pre-independence Jamaica. Why is this period so significant to you? Well, may I just tell you how it all came about? Mm-hmm. Um, about two years ago, I had one of my big medical boo-hoos when I was informed that an implant that I have was defective and they could not fix it. Or it was not suggested that you even try I decided to take my first trip to Europe. I'd never been to Europe. I'd traveled all over the United States and Canada and a lot of the Caribbean, some of the Caribbean cities. But I had not gone to Europe. So I decided to go with my girlfriend on a trip to Europe. I love cruising, so I decided it would be a cruise. However, I wanted to stay in one city and be part of, you know, the the, the community, sort of. So I decided that I would stay in a bed and breakfast. I chose Madrid, and my girlfriend and I flew to Madrid, and I 
stayed with a family that were seniors. And um, I noticed that Madrid is, have you ever been to Madrid? No. Oh, I mean, it's, it's just a wonderful place. The energy, number one, is wonderful. And they have retained, you know, a lot of their art, um, both the structural art and, you know, the, the, the paintings and the museums and their customs. Mm -hmm. Because the family I stayed with were in their 70s, and they had grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And they, they did things traditionally that the whole family was participating. And as I looked, as I moved around the community, I noticed that keeping their traditions was seemed to be very important to them. Mm. And after I flew into Barcelona and I went on the cruise and I came back, and those people taught me a lot about the Internet. There were older people, and they told me about Skype and different things, and I was so fascinated because at so that time I wasn't that involved with the Internet. So that just goes to show you that sometimes you have to leave a place to appreci to come back and appreciate where, where you've been. You definitely, can, definitely. You know? And I came like, back and I got online to see if there was any information that I could relate to, you know, about things that happened when I was growing up, because I left Jamaica in 1959. Mm -hmm. And there really wasn't much. There was not much at all. And uh, I, my oldest grandchild is, is going to be seven. And already, you know, the, the kids nowadays are using the Internet and games and all of that. And I know that the method of communication that he will be using will be getting his information online. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, what is he going to find out about me and how I grew up? And incidentally, I'm the oldest of my family. My mother was the eldest of her, all her sisters, and I'm the eldest of all my cousins. I don't have any sisters or brothers. So any information I have that my younger cousins and family don't have will go with me, right? Mm -hmm. So, and because my house burned down, my house burned down about two years before I took that trip or a year before I took that trip. So all of my documentation in terms of pictures and anything that I had that related to my past just went up in smoke. That's how fast it can happen. And it included some things that I had from my mother some things that she had from her mother, and and I realized that I had nothing to that would you know say anything about my past. Mm -hmm. So that's when I went online, and there wasn't much information about you know the period I grew up in. Mm -hmm. So I got this idea of trying to encourage seniors to tell their story, you know, before they leave the planet. Mm -hmm. And and to put it in a format that is being used now by the younger generation, and we know is the future, which is the Internet. Right. Because just like how I was trying to preserve a lot of things, but, you know, through the fire, I lost everything. Mm -hmm. So that's what sort of gave me the idea and drove the passion. Because there is a lot of information about the now Jamaica and what's going on now. You know, they're doing a very oh, good yeah. job of documenting everything. For the now. Yeah. Right. What? But there is not really a lot of information about, not a lot of information. I mean, living stories from right. lived the past. So who are the personalities that dominated the culture during your formative years? Oh, well, my my mentor and my very favorite person was Norman Washington Manley. Mm -hmm. I just really, really admired him. I loved his eloquence. You know, his, uh, I mean, he was my mentor. As a matter of fact, when I came here, I wanted to become, I wanted to go into law. You know, I changed afterwards. But, um... I was really, really very fascinated with him. I see. Oh. Um, Miss Lou's birth Miss Lou's birthday would have been today, September sixth. 
Uh-huh. What are your fond memories of her? Oh, wow, yes. Yes, yes. You know, she was born in the period of my mother. I think my mother was b- born 1912, mm-hmm. and I think Miss Lou was born 1919, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, as growing up as a young person in Jamaica in those days, we um, the pantomime was the biggest street, and it was always held around Christmas time. And for me, the most entertaining part of the pa- pantomime or any anything that was going on around holidays would be Miss Lou. Because in the days that I grew up, you know, in the 30s and 40s, it, 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 the patwa was sort of a treat. You know, you didn't... You didn't do it in, 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 in front of your parents or right. Parents As a matter of school. fact, you had to do it just you would be friends. expected. You would yeah. would be expected to speak the Queen's English. Mm-hmm. And what really intrigued me with I loved Miss Lou is oh, yeah, her her passion, her energy. You know when she when she said her po- when she recited her po- poems when you saw her. Have you ever seen her in live concert? Yeah, actually, my very first play, uh-huh. um, that, and and it was interesting that the, 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 all that occurred is, um, I was I was born in Kingston, but I grew up in Montego Bay, and the week that I was going to be coming to the states, this is when I was a child, right? and um, so I was in Kingston with my family, just kind of getting ready to come to the states, and that particular Saturday evening, they had a, a play. At some state, you know, I was a child, so I don't know where it was, but that is where I first saw Miss Lou live. Because she used to have a show called Ring a Ding. Yes, like, yes. Saturday uh-huh. morning. Uh-huh. Saturday morning, I would see that. But I just remember that that particular Saturday, I had a double dose because we had Ring a Ding in the morning, and then in that evening, yeah, I know it was, I remember it being evening, and I, um, I saw for the first time in my entire life, I saw a play. We went to some theater, it was like live theater, and Miss mm-hmm. um, Lou was performing, um, Randy Williams, he was yes, performing, yes, yes. the whole, so, so I don't remember the play per se, but I remember it because it was, one, it was Miss Lou, and it was my first time in my entire life seeing live theater, so just the the, the impact of being in the theater, this, um, the people are live in front of me, you know, it was just a real, and we were, I remember being in the balcony. Of the, oh the theater, yes, wherever it was. So the whole thing it was it was such an excitement, you know. Can you imagine a little six year old scene? Oh yes, Do you remember? Yes, yeah. yes. And I so, think I, it, it was the same thing with me because you know we we, we had movies. You know, we always had the, whatever the American movies were at the time mm-hmm. when I was growing up. And going to the movie, especially if you lived in Kingston, you went to Carib to matinee. Mm-hmm. That was a big thing. But live theater would be Miss Lou and the pantomime. You know what I mean? And right. her energy and her passion, I mean, really, really resonated with me. So yes. I, she was one of my, my favorite persons. I think it's very important to continue to have live theater, whether it's the, um, because think about it. I mean, I was a child, and I remember that experience. That was my first live theater. And it's unfortunate that in many of the inner cities, um, mm-hmm. whether it's the U.S. the U.S. and Jamaica, one of the things, the first things they cut out is fine arts. Right, and a lot of children are not being exposed to that, which is an unfortunate thing because it's important to see live theater, and more importantly, it's it's important to see you in that theater, right? Because yes. um, with the, I'm seeing me acted out in front of me, and then I remember, um, like like you said, we would go see movies. They would take me along to see a movie, and it was during that era that the movie, The Harder They Come, Uh was out, and I remember how Jamaicans were so enamored, you know, from my, you know, like when you read about it later on, it said, this is like one of the first times they were seeing themselves, 
Right, definitely. Uh, be, you know, on, on a big screen. So it's very important to see yourself in the way it resonates. The jokes resonate. The cultural, um, indio- what do you call it, idiosyncrasies mm-hmm. resonate. And then you, you just really appreciate that. Yeah. So Miss Lewis definitely made an impact on me. Um, any other personalities you recall that made an impact on you? Well, actually, I um, I was fortunate enough to be one of the early dancers with Ivy Baxter. Hmm. Okay. Actually, I was in a performance that we had put on for Princess Margaret when the queen was crowned after her father died. Mm-hmm. And uh, Queen Elizabeth was crowned. They had a regatta. It's, I think it's, that's what it was called, which is like a special thingy. Event. And um, Princess Margaret um, came to Jamaica, and so um, we put on this special cultural dance for her, and I was one of the Ivy Baxter dancers. Really? That's, oh. that's, that's wonderful. Yes, I, I, yes. I learned about her and, and the things that she did. She was a trailblazer, too. Oh, yes. Because, you know, she was doing that creative dancing. We were doing right. that creative dancing long before it was popular here, especially among people of color. Right. Folk dancing. Yes. Would call yes. It. Right. Yes. That, um, and that I learned about. So um, women have um, been a a force in pertaining a culture. How can we leave a legacy of our experience for those who follow us? Well, I think is is having it recorded. You know, one of the shows that I did on Block Talk Radio, my co-host brought it to my attention that, you know, Marcus Garvey or his wife didn't, didn't, didn't write about their lives and their experiences. Their lives and their experiences had to be put together by somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, I think it is so important, especially the things that we think impact us in a positive way mm-hmm. and had had some meaning to us to help propel us to success or yeah. to overcome I think it is important to share that right. um, to the next generation. I think it's very important. You know, on the the show I did last week, I don't know if you were listening, but uh, Maxine, the the guest, who is a poet, yes. talked about, I asked her, you know, one of those questions are, how did she start? And it was under severe stress when she she really realized that she could write. So my point is, we by leaving stories like that, it can serve as encouragement for the next generation that they know that things are not always easy. I mean, I know we live in a in the whole world now. You push a button and everything happens. You know that that would be the feeling. It's not happening fast enough, quickly enough. Yeah. But 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 by leaving our stories of you know what helped us move through whatever difficulty, you know, how we overcame, wh- who were our mentors, who were our, our heroes, who did we want to emulate. You know, I think those are the things that will be helpful. Yes. So, so what can we expect from you in the near future? Oh, well, well, actually, my 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 hope would be that more Jamaicans, but the people uh, uh, all uh, from all cultures that are in my age group would, you know, know that we have to pass the torch. We have to, you know, a lot of people complain about the, the kids. Now, even in my family, I had a, a dear aunt who, when I was growing up, you know, she was, you know, someone I looked up to, and, um, or, you know, you always think the people you're looking up to are perfect. We know no one is perfect. But I remember when I would, as I became um, an adult, and she grew older, and I would ask her questions about her past, mm-hmm. she would not necessarily be anxious to share it with yes, me. 
I think it's a cultural thing because right. I, I find it to be the case with um, the older people in my um, in my family. Mm-hmm. And, they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate because, like I say, I, I wanted to write about. I'm a novelist. But um, in right. my head, anyway. No, <laughs> in my head, I'm a novelist in my head. But I mean, I have a novel, <laughs> and so I wanted to write a novel about um the Kendall Crafts and, uh-huh. and the impact of the community and um the people who had access to the information, um you know like what how they were feeling or or, or things mm-hmm. of that nature, um just to kind of get a feeling of how people were going through. They were a bit reluctant. They didn't want to do that. So it's good to hear that you are very open and embracing of um, sharing your um, your tremendous experience of Jamaican culture, and we definitely appreciate you spending some quality time with us. So, um, so before we leave, Chris, would you like to, um, do you have any questions for our distinguished guests? Well, I'm just encouraged that you 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 have blazed the trail and you continue to blaze the trail and to encourage seniors to actually capture the important memories of life to leave that kind of legacy. We do not, we cannot do without stories like that. And I'm I'm so thankful and grateful that you were able to spend some time with us and to thus encourage us and encourage other seniors to actually capture that element. And I hope they, they'll get to uh, tune into blog talk, your blog talk radio and get inspired like we have been. Oh, well, thank you so much. And I appreciate you having me on your show. Yes. And I admire, I want to encourage all the young people to start asking the older people, the seniors, you know, pump it out of them. You know, ask them what 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 they're passionate about. I mean, and and perhaps that will get them into thinking to become more passionate about leaving a legacy. So you've got your work cut out for you too. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot to do. To learn more about Chris Daly's blog, visit Jamaicans dot com, and then you can click me think me thinking. We say it in a patwa today. Me right. thinking, right? Um, and you can no hear his, say it. <laughs> you hear his blog. You can read about his blog, or you can visit his website at, at yardgenius dot com to learn more about Jamaican diaspora. His blog, the radio show, the TV show. Visit Jamaican diaspora dot com, and to learn more about Margaret. Um, and listen to her show. It's her weekly show. It comes on on Wednesday. Go to Backyard Labrish, and then you can learn more about that interactive website and listen to her radio show. Visit BackyardLabrish.com. Margaret, it's been a pleasure, and we appreciate you spending a lot of time giving us some insight on what it was pre-Jamaican independence, and we wish you the very best. Oh, I appreciate you all, and I thank you for having me as your guest. It was my pleasure, and you can call on me anytime, sweetie. Oh, we will. All right, and keep up the good work and keep asking those questions. Okay. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like breakup R and B intense. I thought you said you love the sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. 
Just go to Geico.com anytime to update or check your policy without all the extra drama. I even had a different seat. You heard the speech. But behind the glitter lies this stark truth. In Hillary Clinton's America, things get worse. Under her dishonest plan, taxes keep rising, terrorism spreads. Washington insiders remain in control. Americans losing their jobs, homes, and hope. In Donald Trump's America, people are put back to work. Our families are safe. The American dream achievable again. Change that makes America great again. I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. 